The film has been acclaimed in numerous publications, including the New York Times, Film Comment, LA Times, Village Voice, Art Forum, Variety, and Screen International. Matt's short films, including an experimental biography of the artist and AIDS activist, I'm going to slaughter this, David Wanarovich, Wanarovich has screened at numerous film festivals, art spaces, and universities worldwide. Currently, Matt is directing videos for the New York Times and a series of short documentaries for the Sundance Channel. Please give Matt a very warm welcome. So people are saying it's experimental. Do you agree with that? Is it an experimental biography? Yeah, I mean, um, I, I came from a more experimental filmmaking background. That was my point of view. Um, and I had intended on making an experimental film with this subject matter, but it evolved and um, snowballed into a feature documentary. And the visual language in the film is, is fairly unconventional. And um, there's quite a bit of uh, kind of fake archival material that we've shot on our own that you may have picked up on in, in the film that are kind of evocative recreations. And so, um, you know, critically, the film has been discussed as being an, an experimental documentary. It's, it, but it does have structure. I mean, there, first of all, it's difficult to get into Berlin if you don't have some structure. Um, yeah, I mean, the film, I'm, the film is steeped in storytelling, and it is an emotional experience. It's, it's really just has a form that, um, you know, is, is not the traditional broadcast documentary form. And one of the things I like about it, and it's mentioned in um, periodicals like Film Comment, is that it's kind of not over the top. It doesn't hit you over the head. There's something sort of quiet and subtle and beautiful about it. But not only, you know, the cornfields and things, but people's voices, his lover's voice. It seems like, you know, he's known you forever. Clearly, he's very comfortable with you. I think documentary filmmakers always want to know, how do you, how do, you do that? I mean, I have specific strategies for interviewing people. Um, uh, which I can talk about, but I think the key difference between a journalist and a documentary filmmaker is the amount of time you spend developing relationships with your subjects. So by the time I had shot the key interviews for my film, I had been in regular communication and building trust and building expectations with the subjects of my film for almost a year. And how long did it take you to make the film? The film took two years to make, and then the, you know, the process of traveling with it to film festivals and um, uh, dealing, finishing and dealing with the distribution of the film is basically another year. So in total, it's about a three-year process for this film. People don't know, a lot of people don't know who Arthur Russell is. So could you tell them who he is and maybe compare some of his music to music they might know? And yeah, Arthur Russell was an avant-garde cellist and disco producer. He worked with um, Philip Glass and Allen Ginsberg and David Byrne from the Talking Heads. And um, he died unknown, but uh, about four years ago, his music started being re-released and um, a renaissance kind of started and he's um, developed a kind of international cult following. Um, his music has been compared to Nick Drake and New Order and um, a lot of his disco music, which was very kind of uh, playful and uh, vanguard, has been kind of um, noticed and, and discussed in relation to some of the bands that are kind of part of the resurgence of disco now, like Hercules and Love Affair or, you know, or, or others as well. So. Um, Arthur, you know, has a pretty international following now, and uh, the film, in addition to a book that are coming out, are kind of fueling that, that renaissance further. So, in uh, Filmmaker Magazine, you talked about the plot points, about where Arthur started, and, you know, his being in the kitchen. Can you sort of run through some of that? Again? Yeah, I mean, Arthur's story is somewhat conventional. I think that the figures he crossed paths with and ended up collaborating with. Um, are less conventional. He grew up in Oskaloosa, Iowa, which is, you know, your, your standard Midwestern town. Um, and he ran away from home when his dad caught him with pot. And he ran to San Francisco where he joined a Buddhist commune. He met Allen Ginsberg in a park, became his music teacher, and started collaborating with him. Uh, and when the commune forced him to um, uh, pool all of his possessions to be communal, uh, he, he defied the, the commune's rules and practiced cello in the closet. And ultimately, he followed Ginsburg to New York, where he moved into an apartment in the East Village, where Richard Hell and other kind of countercultural figures besides Allen were living. And he um, became music director at The Kitchen, which was kind of the hub of the avant-garde music world of John Cage and Philip Glass. 
And simultaneously, he became involved in the underground disco scene, which is different than Studio 54 or even Paradise Garage, which you may have heard of. It was an underground party, public, or excuse me, private party scene in which people came together listening to music and dancing. And in many ways, it was a kind of utopic social experiment. And between these two worlds, Arthur created music and ultimately developed a body of work that was kind of solo cello um, art songs, almost like art lullabies. Um, Some of the material you heard in the first clip. And um, he continued to make progress, but lots of career opportunities passed for him because he was a perfectionist to a fault and he uh, could never complete or finish any of his work. And then Arthur got HIV and he ultimately died of AIDS before he was really discovered. And then the story, of course, ends today uh, as his music has, has in fact been discovered long after his death. And the film, um, The film follows quite closely his parents, who are still in Oskaloosa, and his former boyfriend, who have reconnected and formed a relationship following Arthur's death. And that's much of the kind of emotional crux of the film.